The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard that he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were heal healed. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. In godly play, we say that prophets are people who come so close to God, and God comes so close to them that they know what God wants them to do. Prophets speak in metaphors, often using everyday images to help people connect with what God is calling them to be and to do. Two weeks ago, we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, who is famous for using the image of dry bones brought back to life. Death is universal, an everyday image that anyone can connect with. And Ezekiel's vision of God breathing new life into something long dead is a powerful testimony. Last week, we heard from the prophet Amos, who held up a plumb line. Perhaps unfamiliar to us in our modern age of liquid and laser levels, the plumb line was a universally known tool in the ancient world. It would have immediately resonated with the listeners as a call to be straight and true and well-built. And today, the prophet Jeremiah uses perhaps the most well-known and loved metaphor of the Bible, the image of sheep and shepherds. This metaphor is particularly powerful for us gathered here today because it is our image. We are Good Shepherd Church. So the stories of God, the Good Shepherd, are well known and well loved here. The danger, of course, is that familiarity can breed contempt. And having heard stories of sheep and shepherds so often, it can make it hard for us to hear in them something new. It can, in fact, make it hard for us to hear them at all. We know this story so well, it's easy for us to trap it in stained glass to believe it has only one meaning, one teaching. And we already know that, so we don't need to listen to it again. With the Good Shepherd, it's easy to get stuck in a single way of understanding that story. This week, I was talking to our lower school chaplain, Mother Stephanie, and she told the parable of the Good Shepherd to the school children last year. Afterward, one mom approached her concerned. When the mother had asked her daughter about the story, the girl had told her about the parable, the good shepherd who seeks out the lost sheep, who saves them from the wolf, who leads them out of dark places. 
And then the child said, but we don't know who that shepherd is. I wonder who the good shepherd might really be. The mother was concerned that her child didn't get the story. She had missed the point. Obviously, Jesus is the good shepherd, the mother said. But my daughter didn't seem to get that. I imagine many, if not most of us, are like that mother. If someone asked us who the good shepherd is, we'd look at them like they were a little bit slow and say, Jesus, obviously, and then we'd move on. We hear that story and we're sure that we already know it and that we understand it. Jesus is the good shepherd. We are meant to be the sheep. We are the ones who are cared for, the ones who follow, the ones protected from the wolf, the ones led out of dark places. What if I told you that the little girl was exactly right? But we don't know who that good shepherd is. I wonder who the shepherd might really be. That's the question of a great theologian. That's the question of someone who is actually listening to the story as though it is a live story and hearing in it many possibilities. That is the question of someone who is still letting that story speak to her today. I've told the parable of the Good Shepherd to many children in many godly play classes. When we ask the question, I wonder who the Good Shepherd might really be, we mean for it to be a real question. When I've asked that question over the years, here are some of the answers that I have heard. The Good Shepherd is my parents who lead me through dark places and keep me safe. I think the Good Shepherd is when you teach me about the bread and the wine. My teacher is the Good Shepherd. She shows me the right way to go. I am the Good Shepherd when I help my little sister put on her shoes and get ready. Sometimes our smallest theologians have things to teach us. They have no problem imagining possibilities. They're eager to tell us all the people that the Good Shepherd might really be. Sometimes our adult sensibilities jump right to a single answer, a right way to hear the story, and a wrong way. And we get stuck in what we know best. It is that inability to hear the story well that is precisely the difficulty the prophet Jeremiah is wrestling with in today's reading. The people of God are familiar with the image of the Good Shepherd, but they aren't living out their calling to be Good Shepherds. They love the words of Psalm 23, but they are not bringing those words to life. They might have gotten good at being sheep, but they aren't very good at being shepherds. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning my shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away. You have not attended to them. The people of Jeremiah's time are looking around, wondering who on earth Jeremiah might be talking to. He must be talking to someone else, they think. Maybe this is about the kings. Maybe it's about the religious leaders. Certainly it's about other people, not about me. I can't be a shepherd. I'm just a sheep. In fact, that's the way we typically think of that whole shepherd-sheep thing in the Bible. Our image of the relationship centers around the idea that we are the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, and I receive the gift and comfort of being a sheep safe in the arms of a loving Savior. The Lord is my shepherd, so I come to church to be fed and watered. 
The Lord is my shepherd, and I'm a sheep who just needs to follow where I'm led. If we hear in the Bible about bad shepherds, we think it must mean some of the leaders of long ago or maybe of today, maybe the leaders of the church. We make those words about other people. But the thing is, Jesus is the good shepherd, the icon who shows us what shepherds can be. But we are made in the image of the good shepherd. So we are called not only to be sheep, but also to be shepherds of God's sheep. It's both. That's the reality of the Bible and the complexity of our identity in Christ. We are sheep of the good shepherd. The psalm is about and for us. We are also called to be good shepherds to God's lost lambs. We are not just one thing in the story of God. We take on many roles and we have many responsibilities. We are sheep of the good shepherd and we are shepherds in God's kingdom. We follow where God leads and we lead others into the way of the lamb. The question is not a question of our identity because we aren't picking either or. We are both, whether we like it or not. The question is one of discernment. When am I called to be a sheep led by God? And when am I called to be a shepherd leading God's people? Where, in the church and in the world, do I need to step up and take my place as a good shepherd to others? The harshest word that the prophet Jeremiah has for the bad shepherds is that they are inattentive. They don't attend to others. Bad shepherds are focused on what they can receive from God and forget to ask what they're called to give to God. Bad shepherds are focused on their personal relationship with God and neglect their duty to tend the other sheep. Bad shepherds watch a sheep wandering from the fold and think, I wonder who's going to do something about that. Instead of thinking, I need to go lead that sheep back home. Bad shepherds are distracted and let sheep wander off because they're so convinced that they are sheep that they forget to be shepherds. They are, you might say, shepherds in sheep's clothing. But good shepherds? Good shepherds seek out and encourage the lost and the wandering. Good shepherds lead by example and bring the sheep back home. Good shepherds stand up to the wolf and dispel fear rather than stoking it. Good shepherds follow in the footsteps of Jesus, not just as a sheep, but as one who leads the people of God along the way. As a very wise theologian once said, but we don't know who that shepherd is. I wonder who the good shepherd might really be. I wonder if it might be you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.